If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck now to skate the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck a liar call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. Hi everybody, it's Andrea, aka Violet Kitty 411 Welcome back to my channel. Thank you to everyone who has been commenting, liking, and subscribing. I really do appreciate it. It does make this more fun, gives me more impetus to do these. And so let's get on with it. Obviously we are in Veronaville, and that was actually Puck's last soliloquy from A Midsummer's Night's Dream. The soloist in the background is actually my cat, Daisy, whom I also call Shut Up Daisy. Anyway, so today's clients are the Summer Dream family. The Summer Dream's kindly nature and zest for life have cast a romantic spell over Veronaville's youth, but will there be any magic left for Puck? Well, let's go in and check it out. The party is already already underway and Puck's sweetheart Hermia is here. He wants the first kiss and now is the perfect time to make his move. Okay, I find it funny that they're just all lined up right here ready for the party to begin. Okay, so anyway, this is the Summer Dream House. Let's go ahead and take a look in it in daytime mode. And all the world is a stage and we are but its players. So this of course is meant to be the globe. William Shakespeare's stage. And this is what we have. Honestly, the best way I can fix this house is to bulldoze the entire thing and start over. But we're not going to do that. Nope, nope, I'm going to make myself suffer. Uh, but this is, of course, where I actually first had a problem with the water line. And they were up to their chins in what appeared to be water when I first did this. So here we have impossibly large rooms. Bottom's room, which would technically be illegal because there is no window. and But I guess fairies don't have the same laws that humans do, so there's that. And still Daisy with the solo in the background. I'm going to hold her now because maybe that will make her less noisy. Okay, so yes, very large, unwieldy, strangely shaped rooms. Of course, there are way too many diagonal walls. And while I don't hate diagonal walls, I do think we need to be cautious with the use of them. Uh, three very large rooms on the first level. And not that I need more space because this is actually quite a large house, but a large area for basements. So as far as I know, they don't have anything I need to keep, but I'm going to pan around just to make sure. So the only thing that I really feel the need to grab, and I don't even need to, is I'm just going to put the newspaper just so they have it when they move back in, in case they need it. So yeah, let's go ahead and evict them. All right, from the neighborhood screen, let's go ahead and evict our family. They had about 6,500 simoleons in their bank account, and let's see, their budget is 185. They have 11 friends, so they could jet up the work ladder, so, and the building sells for 79300 Okay, sounds good. So here we are in the home before I deconstruct it. Now, I actually like the backstage area. I think it's, or the, the backyard, which is the stage area. I think that's actually kind of really inspired. I, while I would never choose to build a home this way, I'm going to keep it. I am. I'm going to keep it. But I'm going to uh, completely, completely get rid of this yard as it stands simply because this is part of the problematic nature of this. This is actually where I first discovered the water line problem in this neighborhood. So yeah, the uneven, they're constantly saying, oh, I can't take care of that bush. I can't do this. I can't do that. It's because it's all kind of trash, not going to lie. And so we definitely need to clean this area up. Now, before you try to change 
lot elevation you have to get rid of all shrubbery you don't have to get rid of trees and I think you do also have to get rid of florals but you can't you have you have to get rid of that in order to change it because shrubbery and ostensibly florals because they're also something your sims would interact with will prevent the lot elevation from changing so I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've gotten rid of everything, I, oop, nope, I see something. Okay, get out of there, you little jerks. Okay, now that I've gotten rid of everything I think is going to cause problems to the next step, I am going to choose the flattened lot, which brings everything to street level. Now, the house is already, the house itself actually dips down one level below street level and there's nothing I can do about that other than tearing it down so yeah that's kind of what where I'm at oh I did actually mean to eliminate these staircases so now that I have flattened the lot the way I want and it's not going to stay completely flat but I will choose this elevation as the basis of what I want for my audience area because I will create an audience area I kind of like the idea I mean I don't hate the I don't hate the concept I mean would I want to create too many houses like this absolutely not do I think it's kind of creative yes I do so this will be the audience area so since they realistically won't have a particularly large audience I'm actually going to keep the audience right here and we're gonna do 10 by 4 and then now this one was with a later, I don't remember, probably nightlife, but maybe university where we had stages. So we will have a two-tier audience area. So let's face it, there's no way they're going to have 18 people watching their performance, but it's fun to pretend, right? And instead of actually smoothing the lap terrain first, I'm actually going to do something. I'm going to put a couple staircases in like this because you can. It takes a little steady hand. I want it this direction, please. This direction. So, because I want to land right there, but I want, uh, there we go. So we can easily jet up those rather than trying to go up an uneven terrain. And so we'll do that a little bit more just to kind of make it like this is the audience pit. So since I have no need for two front doors, we're going to get rid of this guy. And I relocated this just a little. Plus I made stairs going down and up so they don't have to say, hey, walking on this terrain is difficult. So when I flattened the lot, the ground within the foundation was raised to a maximum height of exactly three stairs high, or three stairs deep, I should say. So if I want to, I know that I can use my, my three tile stair trick and this will work. So first thing, I do need to, of course, deconstruct the house so I can do this. And I will go ahead and choose the entirety with the exception of the stage apron for this. So I will put my staircase right there. Delete. And level this off and I did it right so yep when I leveled it it actually put it at the right height that I could do that easily so yes I took significantly longer time getting this to where I could consider it to be workable now I have to figure out a floor plan for this monstrosity now overall the roof is functional for this house and I'm not going to change it much except for these two little areas right here because 
the octagonal roof did not exist before or when base game shipped. So, oops. Okay, come on. Short octagonal roof. I right, make sure I'm on the right height. There we go. And so I will do just that much, and it's not big, but then we will also reduce it to, let's try 25. And that just makes it look more intentional. Now I actually toyed with different locations for the staircase and came to the conclusion that the very strange central location was actually for the best and so we are going to go ahead and do it and I want this three clicks away from there and then I will drop it down rotate it I'm not going to do the strange next to each other like that because of course we do have a downstairs that we need to be able to access so there's that and I am not going to worry about this little space here because for balance we definitely want it very symmetrical with this. Under normal circumstances, not in love with this idea, but this house breaks all the rules anyway, so there's that. Okay, so when it came to the floor plan for the upper floor, of course I enclosed this area because that's where they make their, their entrance for the balcony, but I made a decision that it is actually easier to just avoid these angles almost entirely so we're going to section these areas off now these two small little areas beneath the turrets will be little powder rooms and these areas will be pretty much ignored and so from here I'm going to make two four by five bedrooms one of which will be bottoms because you know she needs a bedroom with a window just saying it's actually required to have a window and then these two, one would be pucks and one would be the master. And then we will have identical powder rooms. I might actually make them a little bit, yeah, a little bit different, but pretty much that for the upper floor. Now the bottom floor is so awkward that I am going to stick with the same basic concept of the floor plan, but I'm gonna delineate it a li little bit more. So we're going to have a bathroom here and this here. So this will be the entrance with the bathroom. And this back here, I will actually delineate this as a library. And we will have two unique areas right here that are that are separate this will basically just be a hallway waiting to get on stage this will also be a similar area to that now this was just one large monstrosity of a kitchen we're going to give it a specific dining area as well as a kitchen with an eating space and then when we go downstairs uh, this will of course be swimming fishing exercise, gardening, all that. And as I delineated, this will be the swimming room, general gymnasium area, the garden, and the fishing area. Now let's go ahead and put our textures on. So with all the textures on it, this is what I have. I really went for as much floral inspired as I could find simply because it made sense for this family. Fairies are supposed to be naturalists. Honestly, they should be running around naked, but we can't do that. Anyway, so a lot of the boho, I used a lot of the boho stuff from Apartment Life and also some of the storybook stuff as well as the season stuff. And so here we have Puck's room bottoms room whom I have tentatively renamed Blossom in my mind. I haven't done it officially in Sim PE, but Bottom is a terrible name plus the character was actually a male. So there's that. The two bathrooms have upstairs have the roses plus the tile flooring and then here we've got the uh, 
Titanias and Oberons, and we have a nursery in case one comes along. And then, of course, down here we have the kitchen, the dining room, what will be the library, the welcoming room with the with the bathroom and downstairs we have our swimming room general room most likely for working out our fishing room with these this pattern that matches the plant sims skin detail and our gardening room and so now I just have to furnish it so I came in well under budget, which is absolutely amazing, and that's why you would definitely want to do any major terrain fixing while you're off the lot, because then you don't have to pay for it. It's free. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we enter into a front sitting room, music room, just general recreation room. There's a desk for the kids to drop their homework on. Then we have the little bathroom right here, and we have a more formal conversation here, conversation area. Now down this kind of gangway, we do have a quiet room for chess, art, and reading. Or we have right here to wait in the wings while you're waiting for your cue to go on stage. Okay, and through that hallway, we have a bar with some darts and then we have our dining room and our kitchen and they are actually adjoined to the each other like I said I really tried to choose the most naturalistic coverings lots of florals to reflect the fact that they are meant to be fairies and we do have the wedding arch here I did aim the spotlights directly at the wedding arch to try to Create. let's see how it looks at night so there's spotlights and I don't know if people sitting on these risers would be able to watch the wedding but it's fun to say that they could and so upstairs there is access to waiting for your queue up here this large hallway up here I just did not do anything with I wanted to leave it empty uh, I came well under budget. Budget's about 185. I'm sitting at 171, and that's having added so much. Titania and Oberon's rooms is in purples, indicating that they are distinctly royal. And then we have a little half bath here for them only, and a full bath adjacent to their bedroom. Then I have a little nursery here. I'm about to sneeze. Okay, false alarm. So I have a little nursery with stars and moons. There, the, This covering is from Sims Life Stories. And then over here we have bottom slash blossoms room with the canopy bed and a bear and a dollhouse. A couple of small dressers. And here we have pucks with a sleeker bed, a couple of dressers, and a desk, and his own little washroom. And of course another full bath. So we've got a slide into the pool and a ladder that you don't have to keep there if you don't want. And then I have the lower value hot tub because it just made more sense because it was more natural than the other one. And a couple of exercise bikes. A bathroom that I didn't Put any fixtures in and actually I guess I could but I won't and then our little fishing hole okay so here's our family and I did actually go ahead and put the bathroom as well as some florals in the fishing pond so let's go ahead and take a look-see Okay, wonderful. And let's take care of something else real quick. They have all gained their wings. Now let's go ahead and get them in and see what they think of the home. And Bottom is enjoying music and dance. And let's, oh nice, you just became friends. We love that for you. You're on your way to having a good day. 
and they go downstairs and upstairs very easily. That's wonderful. Taking the most inappropriate route because the house has terrible pathing, even though I've tried to make it better than it normally was. And I wanted to make sure she could use this toilet right here. And she can, wonderful. Which means Bottom is having the same experience. And her wings, well, okay, I guess she can't. Maybe I placed it slightly differently. Okay, interesting to know. And the boys are downstairs playing a little bit of darts. And now we will have the ladies cheer them on. Good job. Get a bullseye there, Puck. And I think it was a success. I'll have to see what I can do with that other toilet. I placed it exactly the way I placed the first one. But it, in all, I think it is a much better build. It's still going to be awkward regardless because this is definitely in the top 10 of bad builds that comes in The Sims 2. All right, well, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I will see you soon in the pixelated world. And that's all I have to say. VK out.